Tonight on Border Security. Drug runners or illegal workers? Either way, there's trouble brewing. Now, we called Kingsgate Hotel. You don't have a reservation there. Have. Will love conquer all, or will this <laughs> Romeo have to go? That's if he abides by the law, then um, I have to go. Why am I being treated as a terrorist, or a drug smuggler, or trafficker? And why is this man demanding to be searched? Before you even touch down on Australian soil, customs will know a few things about you. They'll know who you are, where you are coming from, and when you bought your ticket. And while that might not seem like a lot of information to you or me, it's a goldmine for customs. And more than enough to start an investigation. <laughs> Mr Loon and Mr Chong have just got off a flight from Malaysia. While all other passengers on their flight have cleared immigration and customs, their ticketing and travel details have raised a flag. They're coming here for a short stay, they don't know what they're going to do here. The younger looking guy, he's very nervous, he's shaking a lot. And um, yeah, we're just, we're just trying to ascertain whether we think that they might have drugs with them or whether they're an immigration risk. Either way, these two aren't going anywhere quickly. If you were travelling halfway across the world for three months, how much money would you bring? Brian from Texas only has $200, and that's attracted immigration's interest. He lost his job about a week ago. He's only been working there for three months as a plant operator. Uh, he's got no debit cards, no credit cards. He's met this girl, what I have heard from customs is about a couple of weeks ago. She is a Vietnamese exchange student. Brian says he's fallen head over heels with a woman he met on the internet. He's never seen her in person before, and whether he will today is up to Ken in immigration. Brian, is it? Yes. Yeah, come in, Brian. We'll have a word with you. There's a teddy bear for you, for your girlfriend. Oh, that's not special. <laughs> just look there. Just come in, come in the office here. Teddy will be OK. Just come in here, Brian. So is Brian looking for love down under, or is he here for some other reason? That's what Ken needs to find out. I'm going to ask you a number of questions that you must answer truthfully. Yep. The penalty for an offence against Section 234 of the Migration Act is 10 years imprisonment. Now, do you understand that? Yes, sir. OK. I just received a call from the customs duty manager. He's reported a, a bird, um, a live bird flying around the, the customs clearance area. Um, we have a bit of a concern with live birds, um, purely for, for the reason of um, the avian influenza risk and also a Newcastle disease risk. They're both um, diseases of, of birds and poultry. Um, I have a feeling that this bird is a domestic bird. Um, we've been told it's flown in from outside, so that risk is lower but we still need to try and catch it and remove it from the sterile area. I can actually see it right now, over. There's the elusive little pest. Um, I feel a quote coming on, but I can't, I can't say it. An Elmer Fudd quote. Yeah, he, he's pretty elusive. Quarantine officers at Sydney Airport are used to dealing with high-flying problems. But what they're seeing today is one of a kind. All in, all in a day's work. I have a relationship with my friend. I met her on through the internet. Over in immigration, Officer Ken is trying to work out Brian's reasons for coming to Australia. Your girlfriend, let's call her Aunt. You call her, what do you call her? Hania. Hania. Nickname. Pet names. Yeah, okay. Or uh, Gold Muay Tiger. That's our. What? Gold Muay Tiger. That means 10 Tiger Lady. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just my nickname to her. Okay. If Brian's only here for love, he's packed some unusual items. Information so far we've got is his um, forms in regards to his citizenship in America, his graduation certificate. He's got no details of where he's going to go, what he's going to do, or anything like that. I noticed in some of your paperwork there you bought a work resume with you. What did you bring that with you? Um, I was looking into uh, maybe coming here to work and live, but that's if the relationship continued. That was on my mind. 
something in here about a Mr. Red. Who's Mr. Red? That's the teddy bear, sir. I gave him a nickname. You know the conditions of a visitor's visa, don't yes, you? Yes, sir. The main reason on a tourist visa is that you don't work. Ah, yes, sir. No working, yes. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. No okay. working, yes. That's what uh, I told her. I said, I can't work or anything, so how are you going to support me? It's a hard decision for us to make here, but you must understand our position. Like I said, you've come here with a minimum amount of cash. You should have enough, enough money to support say, yourself for, for three months, which is, well, but see, you can work that out. $200 won't get Brian past day one in Sydney, and relying on his cyber girlfriend for the rest of his stay is a big call. I think you're coming here to work. He's just, he's just above that foreign exchange sign right now, so I might have to... Back in quarantine, out. the airport's unauthorised visitor is proving difficult to catch. Damn. Time to call in reinforcements. Uh, what I'd like to do is if I'll get you to move up that end of the hall and then work your way back, and I'll start from this end of the hall and work our That's way in the middle and see if we can flush it out. It is getting tired, so I've chased it a fair amount already. <laughs> All righty okay. then. Well, let's see how we go then. All right. OK. Every day, as many as 11,000 passengers arrive in Australia via Sydney Airport. Many of these passengers will be approached by customs and questioned about their travel. Most people don't mind. Some mind a lot. You know, why is it I always get singled out? Because I'm black? Because I'm from West Africa? Jim from customs is actually satisfied that Roberto poses no threat. Just for a change, though, this passenger wants his bags to be searched. No, I want to be searched, because then I can say, I can you, say, then you I can say, say be... harassment. Seven times! Seven you get, times in eight you years! Get, you get spoken to... Seven times in eight years! So if you come here... I've, come, I've been coming here for eight years, yeah, and this is the seventh time I have come here. I've only come to Australia seven right. times, and seven so... times guys like you come and harass me. Seven times. There's not one time where I've been able to go through like anyone else. Now, if you want to do it, let's so, do it. But just... tell me who your boss is, because I'm really angry I, now. I, I've had a 31-hour right. flight. No, that's all right. I think you're coming here to work. Um... No. We, uh, if I was... You had to think about that, didn't you? I, uh, yeah. With only $200 in his pocket and a vague promise of support from a woman he met online, Ken's doubting Brian's motives for coming to Australia. You've got no incentive to go back to the United States? Um, I have very much incentive. I could, at least there I'm at home. That's my home turf. Here, I don't... I already told her I don't have enough money. I only have enough for the plane ticket. So if I get there, you have to deal with the rest of the other part. You have to deal with me for three months. And will you um, deal with that part? And that's, um, she said, she agreed to it. And that was what she said. So if she still doesn't agree with that, then I have no, uh, no reason to be here. While Brian pleads his case to Ken, immigration manager Sarul calls his cyber love to check out his story. And I said, are you going to be supporting him? He said, she said, well, I don't know. So his expectations of her is much more than what she's telling me. It's looking very much like we may consider cancelling your visa. Do you understand the implications of that? Uh, no, sir. Back in Sydney, Roberto's anger has reached boiling point. No, no, seven times I've, I've been kept, passports, I've been asked where I'm from. Then so I've been told, on every the flight. last three times, I've been told that people from where I'm from in the world are troublemakers. Mm. You get a lot of has. I've been told that. Why should yeah. I accept people that? Why should I accept being labelled? At this point, Roberto spots the border security cameras. I'll tell you the story. I've come here seven times in eight years. My wife is Australian. I always come here for three weeks or a month. I resent being told every time I come here that we get a lot of hassle from people from West African origin. I am a British citizen. Yes, I was born in West Africa. Why should I be harassed by folks like that every time I come to Australia? 
Shame on you, Australia. So, what will you do in Australia now for seven days? Oh, no, today. Very good. Day ever, go hotel, sleep. Go to hotel and sleep? Is this your friend's first time to Australia as oh, well? Mr Loon and Mr Chong have told Customs they're businessmen here for a week's vacation. As Customs digs deeper, this story is becoming more and more unlikely. Bank account? Yeah, yeah. Your bank account? No, family. Family bank yeah. account details, yes? Small details tell Customs a great deal about a passenger. My guy's got, he's got about $1,000 in cash. He's got no credit cards or anything, but he does have the bank account details of the family in Penang. Limited funds and information about an overseas bank account may be indicators that a person intends to work here illegally and send the money they earn overseas. Officers also need to be sure these two men aren't carrying drugs. Is there any way I can plead my case to stay here? In Sydney, Ken's still deciding whether to let Brian into the country. Ask away. Mm, for the time frame of three months of what I need, what I do to be here, then it's just to spend my time with her. Um, she'll be going to work and I'll be staying home, wherever she has set up the place for me to stay. In order to gather as much information as possible, Ken will talk to the woman Brian has come to meet. Are you and Brian girlfriend and boyfriend? Did you ask him to come to Australia? No, I asked him if he wants to travel to see Sydney. He really wants to see you. So you'd look after him yeah. while he's here? You want him to come in here, don't you? You want to see him, don't you? Yeah. I'm waiting for his decision and I'm trying to prepare myself if he says um, I got to go home. I'm thinking, please don't let me see her. So if I, if he let me see, if they let me see her, then I'll probably even miss her more. So <laughs> better not, just not let me see her. Meanwhile, over in quarantine, officers Andrew and Cecilia are still chasing a lost bird. At this stage, they're not sure where the bird has come from. If it's stowed away on an incoming aircraft, the concern is that it might be carrying diseases into Australia. I think I can see it under there. <laughs> Keep him into that alcove. Keep him into that alcove. Oh. Almost got him. Do you see it anyway? It's over there. <laughs> oh, beauty. They put him in there, lock the door. Come on, little fella. Out you come. That's better. <laughs> nice and warm. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's obviously flown in from outside. Um, he's been trapped in the terminal because it's only a couple of points of entry, and uh, um, because he's because he's obviously a domestic bird, um, we'll we'll look at letting him go. Look, ultimately, Lee, if there was any suspicion that this bird was of quarantine concern, we would, we would be obviously um, holding it for our for identification purposes. But um, look, this, this is a common sparrow. It is obviously been caught up in the terminal for quite a while, so we're just going to look at releasing it. Okay. Off you go, little fella. It's good to get a happy happy end of the story and. Uh, just makes all the effort worthwhile. You don't like to see animals caged up at the best of times, so we're happy with the outcome. We're just um, 
having the gentleman frisked, conducting a frisk search to make sure that he hasn't got anything concealed on his body. We're just a little bit worried that he may be carrying narcotics somewhere on his body. OK, and now your other one? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. No narcotics on Mr Chong, but Mr Loon has indicated he would rather be frisked in a private room. This officer is going to do the frisk, OK? OK, everything's ready to go. Everything's ready to go. Lucy is out here if you need her, OK? Well, at the moment, we're try they don't appear to have anything on them. Well, we'll see, obviously, once this frisk is done. So the only other place that it could be was inside their stomach. The other guy said he hasn't eaten anything since he's got on the plane, so that's another sign. But we'll, we'll ascertain whether we decide to refer them and then we'll um, call the Federal Police and see if they're interested in having a further chat to them. Back in Sydney, Roberto is trying to make a point about the way he feels customs do their job. I've asked the gentleman and his wife, was I rude to them? He, I say he hasn't anything? been rude. He hasn't been rude. It's not about this man here. Okay. It's, not it's, about, it's about, about your institution project. now. Okay. It's institutionally okay. racist <clears throat> against people like me. Okay. Not about you, not about you. <clears throat> it's about the system. So Look I out just, for people from West so Africa. Just point people out. from West Africa happen to have one thing in common. They're all black. We're getting a form no. <laughs> of call complaints and compliments. On that Last form... time I was given that form, yeah, I yeah. asked someone in your position, I said, yeah. if I fill that out, what will happen? And he turned around to me and said, probably nothing. For oh, me, I, I, would never, I would never say that. And I said, because there you go, wasting my time again. Something does happen. Um, he, look, I can't say for what, what his thought processes were, but something does happen. It's immediately referred to a specific complaint area that have to have to respond to you within a given time you know in response to what you say are they going to stop this wanton targeting of me every time i step on your fair island At Sydney Airport, Roberto and his wife are finally moving on. They're still not happy with the way they've been treated by customs. Did you get all that? Thank you. It needs to change. This country cannot carry on like this with black people like me. Otherwise, we won't come anymore. It's not even as if I'm coming here on a Nigerian passport. I can't... Look, that's a lion, yeah? This country gave birth to this one, yeah? So therefore, I come from a safe Western democracy, yeah? Why am I being treated as a terrorist, or a drug smuggler, or trafficker, or criminal? I feel very embarrassed to be Australian. As far as Jim is concerned, though, it's just another day. You don't worry about it. I mean, if you worry about everybody abusing you in this job, you would have quit years ago. It's, you just cope with it, you know? You, you know you're not like that. Um, I just get a bit miffed because you tend to find people who are, say, of African descent or African American throw this that you're a racist at them all the time, and you're not. He just made a rod for himself. It was just like he was just making a big show. I don't know whether for her or just for his own benefit, you know. If you don't mind, excuse me. I've got to go and calm down, hire a car, and go and enjoy my holiday. <laughs> Now, we called Kingsgate Hotel. You don't have a reservation there. You don't have a booking. Booking? Yeah, at Kingsgate Hotel. Yeah. have. No, no. Yeah? No, they say you don't. Back in Melbourne, the frisk on Mr Loon came up negative. But a detailed examination of their ticketing has revealed some interesting facts and a wider problem than first thought. We linked them to two other people off the flight that are also with immigration. So it looks like we've missed the drugs and we've stopped a couple of people from coming into the country illegally to work. In the end, it came down to good investigative work and finding the discrepancies in their stories. First of all, they stated they had a booking at the Kingsgate Hotel and we called the Clay Hotel and there was no booking there. Okay, and then secondly, we split the two passengers up so they could get different stories from them. And there were holes in the stories. One said they knew each other from working in the uh, construction industry. One said knowing each other from uh, the gold uh, jewellery design industry. So there were a few holes there. And also the, they said they didn't know each other uh, or the other two passengers. There was a group of four of them. Comparing their tickets, we found that all four were actually linked. 
We look at all sorts of documents. We go through everything, find tooth comb, we'll find it. The documents are there, indicators are there, we'll find them. Investigations showed that these men were here to work illegally. For falsely declaring their intentions, both men were sent back home. The men are subject to a three-year exclusion period from re-entering Australia. Well, I've spoken to the girl at the front and no, she's expecting him and she's, um, she's willing to support him. Look, I, I tend to believe her story. Um, she's, she got a little bit upset, which um, seems to me that there is some sort of a emotional attachment with this guy. If he abides by the law, then um, I have to go. But if he uh, abides, abli abides by um, um, compassion and understanding, then he will let me stay. That's, I think that's the bottom line of that situation. I've just spoken to the manager and we've made a decision, OK? And our decision is that we're going to let you in here, OK? Thank you, sir. Th thank you very much. Brian and Mr Red's immediate future is settled. They're officially here for a holiday. I'm very excited. I may not show it, but I am. A little bit scared, but <laughs> be, I think I'll be all right. As for any long-term romance, it seems that is completely up to fate. OK, that's it. Next case. Here we go. I'm not going back to the United States. You will be going back to the United States because that's where you came from. If you wrote a book about uh, the weird things people do, no one would believe you. But, we... but what is it? It's a king cobra. People do strange things. <laughs> you need to pay this. Oh. Yeah. Why am I being treated as a terrorist or a drug smuggler or trafficker? Yeah. It's not the court hearing. And even though I haven't met her, we both love each other very much. Ask him why you're sweating so much. We believe you have committed an offence 